Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch. Uh, I'm here today with the Seiko Turtle SRPF77. Uh, it's the Dark Manta uh, Special Edition. Uh, and it's a watch that uh, I've absolutely fell in love with. You know, uh, I was a huge fan of the SRP E39 when it was released. Uh, I really loved the dial. This essentially is the exact same watch. Uh, they've just toned the blue back a little bit and made it a little bit more of like a, a gray blue instead of uh, kind of how vivid and sporty it was before. And uh, I really love this combo. For me, uh, this watch kind of represents, you know, why I fell in love with Seiko in the first place. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I shared it with you guys today. If you're at all familiar with the Seiko Turtle, then the sizing won't come as any surprise. Um, published at 45 millimeters, they really measure it at closer to 44.8. Uh, the lug tip to lug tip, you're looking at 47.7 millimeters. Uh, although if you measure at these drilled lug holes, you're much closer to that 42.5 millimeters. Uh, it really makes the watch wear extremely well. Um, the side of the case is also undercut, uh, so the watch on wrist, although visually it might look large, uh, it really doesn't feel that way. You know, if you can wear an SKX, you can certainly wear a Turtle. Uh, for me at least, the only difference is that the Turtle does a little bit better job of kind of spreading out that heft. Uh, if you've ever worn an SKX and feel like it's a little wobbly and top heavy, uh, a Turtle really does a great job of kind of correcting that issue. Uh, you have a, a wonderful 7mm crown, you know, while it's not signed it, and is relatively plain, uh, the gripping is phenomenal and they've done a great job as far as notching out the top of the case just to make sure you do have really easy access to it. Um, one of the, the nicer crowns to operate kind of in that lower diver threshold, at, at least in my opinion. The lug width being a standard 22 millimeters means you're going to have plenty of strap options. Uh, although, uh, I've been really impressed with what Seiko is doing with the straps on, on their kind of entry level dive watches here recently. You know, outside of being a little bit of a dust magnet, this silicone strap is wonderful. Um, very soft and supple, very pliable, it feels phenomenal on wrist. You know, it, it's thick enough that it will hold a larger watch in place. Uh, but not so thick that it feels cumbersome or, or awkward on your wrist. Um, as I mentioned, it, it'll taper down to 20 millimeters and then flares back up at, at the tang buckle at right around 29 millimeters, which while that sounds really large, they've done a nice job softening all the edges here so it doesn't feel uncomfortable on wrist. Uh, and the engraving looks really sharp. Uh, the keeper also looks great. I prefer when they do the silicone keeper as it just feels a little nicer on wrist. Um, that said, visually, this is a lot more attractive. Uh, vertical brushing with a nice polished edge, deep engraving of the Seiko logo. Uh, my only complaint is when you're putting the watch on wrist uh, and this is kind of pressed against you. If you try to move it to, to get it situated where you'd like, at least with me, it, it tends to pull hairs a little bit where I don't really run into that issue. Uh, when they stick with silicone. I really like what Seiko does with the underside of the modern day turtle. Uh, the polishing on the side of the case continues onto the underside of the watch and then up on the first or kind of outer edge of the screw down case back. Uh, you also have a polished Seiko Tsunami in the center which is surrounded by a radial brushed section which runs through some of the watch's specifications. Uh, you'll see Divers Watch 200 noted as this is an ISO certified piece. Uh, stainless steel and sapphire crystal, uh, the Prospex X branding and identification number and special edition. Uh, the special edition designation is given to the turtles that are not within just kind of the straightforward colorways. Uh, so your mantas, your patties, your save the oceans and things like that. Uh, you'll also have a country of origin with made in Japan as well as a reference to the watch's movement which is the 4R36. Uh, the 4R36 is an entry level automatic movement. Uh, you do get a 40 hour power reserve and stated accuracy of plus 45 to minus 35 seconds a day. Uh, that said, this watch is running at about minus 10 and in my experience Kind of that plus or minus 15 seconds range is really what you should expect out of the box. While the 4R is an entry level movement, you do get hacking and hand winding. 
Uh, what that means is once you unscrew the crown, you'll feel it kind of jump or, or pop out once you pass the threads. Uh, and that kind of resting or, or furthermost in position, if you move the crown clockwise, you'll be able to feel the movement winding and gaining power reserve. Uh, this is helpful if the watch has sat and died and is no longer running. Uh, you'll be able to give it a quick wind and get things running so that it doesn't stop as soon as you put it on your wrist. Uh, hacking refers to the seconds hand stopping when you pull the crown out to its furthermost position. Uh, this is what you will do when you are going to set the hands. Having this seconds hand stop means you can get a little bit more precise with your timekeeping uh, and it allows you to keep an eye on how much time your watch is either gaining or losing. Being a King Turtle, uh, there are a few upgrades over the original model, uh, the first of which being this bezel. Uh, they did a great job in refining the grip. Uh, it's got a wonderful feeling in hand. There's plenty of traction and a very nice ease of operation with the bezel, uh, while at the same time they've rounded off the edges of these squares to make sure that there aren't any hot spots and, and it doesn't feel cheap. Uh, the bezel insert, which is traditionally painted aluminum, is now a scratch resistant ceramic. Uh, the only complaints that I've really seen are that the pip a lot of times doesn't fully align in the triangle, so make sure you get a, a good visual of the actual watch you're purchasing. Uh, my only complaint with this example is that you'll notice the very bottom of the triangle is a little bit wonky. Uh, that said, it does align with the chapter ring and the dial. Uh, so really, that's just small potatoes for me. Uh, I think overall the execution is done extremely well. Uh, you also get a sapphire crystal. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is AR coating on the underside. Uh, so you'll get this slight blue hue uh, around the edge of the crystal and the direct sunlight. Uh, the coating does a great job of maintaining the legibility with the watch. Uh, which I think is extremely important given how much light play there is with the dial itself. Uh, the dial is certainly the star of the show with the Manta watches. Uh, there's a really beautiful brushing pattern. You know, it's very much uh, like the ocean in that it feels very random but also extremely uniform. Uh, this particular model has a really nice fade in from a dark blue to more of a light gray. Uh, I think it looks phenomenal. You can still see the manta rays, uh, but they are less pronounced than on the, the previous SRP E39. Uh, I appreciate that. You know, I can see them when I'm telling the time, but they're less noticeable from a distance, and I feel less distracting from the overall timekeeping of the watch. So as you might expect, uh, the loom application is phenomenal. Uh, there's a very healthy amount of Seiko's proprietary Lumabrite, and while the Turtle has always been kind of a strong performer in this area, it does feel like with the King Turtle launches that they stepped it up a little bit. Um, you get an extremely vivid green glow. Uh, and as far as duration is concerned, it will make it through the night and morning hours no problem at all. Here we are in my seven and a half to seven and three quarter inch wrist. You know, while the cushion case does give a big visual footprint, uh, the short lug to lug and kind of undercutting to the back of the watch uh, gives it a very comfortable feel. You know, I think at 45 millimeters or 44.8, this is probably the most comfortable watch at that size that I've experienced. You know, as you move your hand back and forth, nothing ever really digs in and it's got a nice soft feel. Uh, also, again, having that little bit of added width uh, eliminates some of the wobble that you will feel with watches that are this same thickness, uh, but boast a, a little bit shorter diameter. This watch really does remind me why I fell in love with Seiko. You know, a really nice, interesting, intricate dial, uh, a great set of specifications, and at what I would consider to be a, an exceptional value. Uh, the retail cost of these watches is $599 or 595 which I think is extremely fair. Um, that said, you can certainly save some money if you go the department store route. These typically sell right around that $475 range. Uh, you can go to Amazon and pick them up for $450. Uh, or you can do like I did. Uh, I use eBay for a lot of my Seiko dive watches, uh, mainly because I want to see the actual watch I'm purchasing uh, so that I can check the alignment. Uh, if you go slightly used, uh, you can pick these up in that $300 to $325 range pretty easily. Uh, I bought this one for $300 and really just couldn't be happier. 
Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It, it really helps in YouTube's algorithm. Uh, also, consider subscribing. Uh, I put watch content out weekly at a minimum, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. What?